Nothing in the past week has made sense. I was completely convinced that I was a predator and a groomer and that I needed intervention. I'm realizing I might not even have a clear understanding of what grooming is. I believed I groomed a child because Jack told me I did, and I believed him because I trusted him. But Jack doesn't know what he's talking about. I made my confession under duress. I fully believed I was a groomer because Jack told me I was one, but I don't believe that anymore. I am not a groomer. I did not groom Eno. It honestly feels like everyone has their own definition of what grooming is, which is so fucking dangerous. But smart people define child grooming as the act of deliberately establishing a relationship with a child to prepare them for abuse. As an action in and of itself, grooming does not have criminal penalties, but facilitation of a criminal sexual act is considered a crime. Many of you likely saw my video where I stated I groomed a minor, and I saw quite a few people point out that it's very strange. The main reason I saw was, people don't usually confess to things like this, they try to fight back against these things. But none of you questioned if what I was saying actually made sense. I was coaxed and guilted into a false confession by someone I loved and took care of. Someone I worked my ass off to provide a moderately comfortable lifestyle, not only for them, but for the two cats they begged me to adopt. One of which he fucking stole from my apartment. My conversations with Eno, while inappropriate and irresponsible, trust me, you will never fucking catch me trying to act like this was an okay thing to do. I wasn't flirting with Eno. My messages have been misinterpreted in the most bad faith and malicious manner possible. Now that I'm having to sit alone with my thoughts for the first time in a really long time, I've been able to reflect on everything. And I've realized that I was very misled by Birdie on many things regarding psychology and psychology-related subjects. I looked to Birdie for any and all information on these subjects because it was their, quote, special interest, and I figured he'd at least know more than the average dumbass. But I've started to realize that the answers he gave me on mental health subjects depended almost entirely on what was most convenient for Birdie. Here are some actual qualifiers for what constitutes as grooming, as is listed by a simple Google search. Isolation of the child. Building the child's trust. Inappropriate communication, which includes asking for secrets to be kept and using sexual language that the child may not understand, and educating the child on the subject. Buying gifts. Giving gifts. Giving the child special attention. Singling out the child to make them feel more mature, special, or different from other children. Showing particular interest in the child. Victim selection. And substance misuse. I did not isolate Eno. Eno was actually already isolated when they first met me. Eno has told me directly that they only ever speak to like three people. That being Sophia the Neko, me, and another person I don't know. I never got jealous if they hung out with other people instead of me. I never told them who they could and could not hang out with. I didn't want to control who they were hanging out with. I wouldn't get upset if they didn't talk to me. The only thing I can think of that probably looked like I did is if I said something in their DMs and they took forever to respond, I would get anxious and think that I upset them somehow. I do that to everyone though. I'm just really anxious. I don't like the idea of bothering people. Building the child's trust. I don't think I was ever even interested in building their trust. The only thing I was ever really concerned about was making them upset or uncomfortable. In fact, it already kind of seemed like they just automatically trusted me with a lot. I didn't really have to do anything on that front. Even then, it was just never on the forefront of my mind. Inappropriate communication. The examples given are asking for secrets to be kept, using sexual language the child may not understand, and educating the child on the subject. I will not deny that my conversations were inappropriate and I shouldn't have been having them, like, to begin with. The only instance of me asking them to keep something a secret would be me saying to them, please don't tell the public I'm depraved. The secret's kind of just out now, I don't care anymore. I never intended to keep our relationship a secret. That was never even something I was intending to hide. It was also never my intention to educate Eno on any particular, like, sex shit. I don't know. Now that I think about it, majority of the inappropriate conversations we had revolved around sadomasochism and like sadistic fantasies, not really sex. Sex was definitely brought up, but it was never my intention to educate Eno about it. Buying gifts or giving gifts. Didn't do that. Eno actually made like a shit ton of gifts for me, but I don't think I've ever made anything in return, which saying out loud makes me feel kind of shitty. But no, I never made any gifts for Eno. Now, I did ask them to make things for me a lot. The most inappropriate thing I think of us was for like a comic. I'm not gonna pretend I'm justified for doing that. No, I think it was inappropriate. 
fucking weird and cringy. But everything else I can think of was mostly just ship art. Giving the child special attention. Examples given are singling out the child to make them feel more mature, special, or different from other children. The fact that I was talking to Enno at all could be seen as me giving them special attention. But not once did I ever tell them that I thought they were more mature, special, or different. The only example I can think of is toward the beginning of our conversations when I told them they were funny. But I wasn't trying to make them feel like they were different from other kids. Showing particular interest in the child. I wasn't particularly interested in Enno. In fact, I had two other friends who I was talking to like this and they knew that. Cough, Kenny. Cough, brother, bitch ass. Victim selection. I did not select them. In fact, they talked to me first. Substance misuse. Didn't do that. Now there's some other things that we really need to discuss when we're talking about this whole grooming situation. So firstly, I am a hetero woman. I am attracted to men, as you can see from these fucking cringy ass conversations that I had with Enno. I did not want to date Enno. I never considered that as an option. I did not reach out to Enno, and it took Enno three months of persistently pestering, prying, and giving me gifts before I finally gave in and spoke to them. From the start, I remained very reserved and kept Enno beyond arm's length. I wasn't super interested in talking to them until they sent me an image of me laying in bed. And I made a joke about it being inaccurate because boy wasn't there. Once Enno started indulging in my very strong autistic infatuation with boy, that's when I started talking a lot more. And as we kept talking, I felt a lot more comfortable sharing certain things about the character that I liked, including personal fantasies. In hindsight, I really should have filtered myself when talking to this person. Definitely should have practiced some restraint. I'm not proud of this. But it was never my intention to desensitize them or harm Enno. That was never on my mind. I imagine that's fairly obvious if the DMs are actually read with more than one brain cell activated. I've been speaking to some individuals who are very critical of me, but they've been fair. They disagreed with the idea that this was grooming because one of them, who goes by Kumo, thought something was off about the evidence that was used to back up the claim. Kumo has been very critical of child predators and people who enact performative vigilante justice online for validation or personal gain. It was explained to me that my understanding of grooming was clearly warped and these conversations just sounded like, I'm quoting Kumo, locker room girl talk. I myself have never been very social. I would even call myself socially inept. I'm a bit of a retard. So I never considered that there was an existing dynamic that sounded similar to my conversations. This was two girls talking about Jeremiah down the block and how hot he is. Once again, I feel the need to make this painfully clear that I am not excusing how I talk to Enno. It was inappropriate, it was irresponsible, it was negligent, and I shouldn't have done it. I regret it a lot. I should have made the responsible choice and stopped these conversations before they even happened. But I know for a fact that this was not grooming. None of the previous qualifiers can be found in my DMs with Enno because I did not groom Enno. My therapist doesn't even think I groomed Enno. And the obvious rebuttals of that could be, well, we don't know what Cindy was saying to the therapist. What reason do I even have to lie at this point? I came into their office specifically saying I believed I groomed a child. And then after telling them all the details, they don't think that what I did was actually grooming. Jack has decided to ride the wave of this controversy to accuse me of sexual assault. But I think anyone listening to what Jack said should be able to recognize that what actually happened is he retracted his consent long after what happened. Which is not only disheartening, but I believe constitutes slander. As someone who has been sexually abused in the past, as a child, the fact that he's so comfortable weaponizing our consensual touching not only makes me unholy levels of pissed off, but also makes me feel extremely heartbroken. Jack is someone I trusted and cared for and loved unconditionally for nearly a year, and he's willing to lie and deceive with clear intentions of ruining my life. I have been labeled a child predator, I've been framed as a sexual deviant, described and implied to be a violent degenerate, and an aggressive rapist. Jack and I had lived together for about nine months, and in that time we established a friendship with boundaries still being discovered. I deliberately asked Jack if the things I was doing were okay, and Jack said they were. I was not under the impression that Jack was not comfortable or even unhappy with the silly acts of poking and squishing. 
Had Jack communicated to me as such, I would have stopped and apologized profusely. Given the nature of our friendship and the level of intimacy we shared, I half-jokingly asked Jack to sit on my face while clothed, to which he politely declined and I respected their answer. This was out of morbid curiosity and honestly, that shit was gay as fuck. I'm just a girl. Het guys have similar humors and dynamics to my understanding. I've seen what the homies get up to. And it's all in good fun to call them gay and tease about it, but being curious isn't indicative of someone's orientation and preference. TLDR, Jack has grossly misinterpreted our relationship in a manner that really fucking hurts, dude. Jack's GoFundMe is a scam and it's slanderous. Jack's selling point on the GoFundMe that raised over $10,000 in like three days was that he didn't feel safe living with me anymore. As if I'm some sort of evil, deranged, violent rapist that was gonna groom Jack next for saying awful shit about me in the next room. Ironic, considering I was a fucking sobbing mess on the couch, laying in the fetal position, breaking down over the awful shit that he said to me. Jack was not financially independent, but neither am I. I occasionally had to rely on Jack's social security to make ends meet and maintain our lifestyle and security. Jack made a little under a grand each month from his benefits. Jack was unemployed and hardly attempted to make any income through commissions. For the nine months we stayed together, I would say that half of that time I was paying rent in full. We moved in in November and Jack hadn't considered splitting rent until February. I had to beg Jack to pay only a third of rent with their social security and he tried to refuse. That would be a total of a little under $300 a month out of the money that was meant to go toward things like rent. I don't think Jack even understands what that money was granted to him for. For the final two to three months that Jack was staying here, Jack was no longer receiving social security due to him not attending a court hearing. Meaning Jack stayed in my apartment rent-free in the time that he had the audacity to pull this shit. I paid for the food. Jack being autistic requires some pricey and specialty items to be constantly in stock. So this was more than just feeding two people and two cats. Jack's only bill, aside from the third of rent, was the internet which checked out to be $45 a month. Jack's social security is what secured this apartment. Jack has asked their viewers in light of grooming allegations of a 14 year old for their money to enable them to ditch their living situation and leave me to handle all the loss. Stealing one of the pets that I own and pay the medical bills for, that I fed and took care of. To make matters worse, Jack has tried to ruin my life in many different avenues. Jack has isolated me from my only real life friends, and socially engineered my coworkers against me. Jack has made a public spectacle about this and ruined my reputation to the point that my family heard about it. My fucking brother heard about this situation at school. Jack has gone on Twitter and wished me more than death. I will go more in depth on that later, but he's publicly celebrating my downfall and interacting with people who make art depicting violent and cruel acts on me. And he and everyone else feels justified doing this shit because pedos are bad. Speaking of, the fact that he feels so comfortable calling me a pedophile when he knows what I've been through and he knows how I respond to those topics is driving me up a fucking wall. He should know damn well that I'm not a pedo. He is way too flippant using this life-ruining word. It's disgusting. I have learned in light of this situation that I have been surrounded by the most deluded and dishonest lunatics I've ever met. A group of people that are part of a wider issue where you can say or do the most heinous acts to someone so long as you call them a bad person beforehand. Whether they are or not seems to be debated after the fact. My confession was false, and the people who reacted thought twice and clearly wanted it to be true. They remarked that something didn't seem right, but didn't bother to question the legitimacy of the allegations and the confession. If I pulled the DM logs of Turkey Tom when he was 18 to 19, I have to wonder what I could find. If I did the same to Deadwing Dork, Chud Logic, Soph the Neko, I have to wonder. If we dug through every interaction you've ever had online, would there suddenly be more incentive to be nuanced and open-minded? Because those aren't even the things I asked for. I'm being represented in terribly bad faith, and I'd be surprised if anyone listed really believes they've never said or done anything that could be used against them in this manner. For those plugging their ears, I have to wonder how you would fare if you were the target. As long as we're all still here, I would like to talk about Jack's video that he made about me. He's the one who brought the situation to the public. He made a lot of points in his video, and I have a lot to say about them. I'm gonna be going more in depth on the things that Jack complained about in his video. I'd like to just get started.
Jack's behavior throughout the situation has been really fucking strange, and I have to question what his motivation was, both in this situation and honestly in our friendship. I'm not sure why he felt like he needed $10,000 from a GoFundMe just to get away from me. That's a shit ton of money. Maybe it's for a fresh start, but it feels a bit exploitative. It feels strange to make a video educating people about someone you believe to be a predator and then ask for a shit ton of money that isn't even meant to help the victim. I feel like he could have asked for enough to buy a plane ticket and a few months of food. Even then, I'm thinking about how we spent four days in Seattle for vacation and Jack's family was exceptionally generous. His aunt let us sleep on her couch for those four days and his grandparents each gave us hundreds of dollars just to shop in Seattle as well as paying for our plane tickets to and from Seattle. But I heard the aunt suggesting Jack ask his papa for expensive gifts because he's likely to buy them for him. If Jack needed money, I feel like he could ask his grandparents for help. Plus, his aunt went to fucking law school. She could probably help him find affordable housing under the guise that Jack is too disabled to work. I feel like his family would be more than likely to help him since Jack keeps framing the situation as an emergency. He needs to get away from City Borough 3 right now! I've also seen plenty of people questioning the use of the panty and stocking designs on his GoFundMe page. I actually asked him that too, because he showed me the page when he made it. I asked why he was using a picture of the two of us and his explanation was that he just threw it all together. I didn't push any further. I saw a lot of people also pointing out that it was weird to include the panty and stocking animation. I kind of agree. It's strange that in the video where you're warning everyone about Cine Barrow 3, the predator, the freak, I'm not a freak, unlike Cine. You include an animation of me dancing on a stripper pole and taking off my panties. Jack claims I sexually assaulted him, which is just not fucking true. In his video, he shows a screenshot of me losing my mind over the fact that he was saying I assaulted him. This plus the fact that Jack admits to consenting to me touching him should have tipped y'all off that he was talking out of his ass. Touching back on, um, Cine's, like, sexual assault towards me, um, I'd like to preface this by saying this is gonna get kind of graphic, so I'm sorry. On a daily basis, she, like, makes comments about my ass, like, how big and squishy it is and how she wants a boyfriend with an ass like mine and she would constantly slap it and grab it. And I'm gonna be honest, I consented to this because I've never had an IRL friend before and I didn't know what kind of touching was and wasn't okay. And, like, I also consented to her, like, touching my boobs. And, like, I guess, like, this stuff is fine because I consented to it, but there's stuff that she did that I, I didn't consent to. Like, she would often poke me, like, in the ass or, like, on my crotch and, like, make jokes about fingering me and, like... I told her not to do this and I said no multiple times and I would even like scream if she did it, but she did it even as recently as like a few nights ago, I think. I still have my doubts about like my feelings about this because like with that that thing I didn't continue to say no and I confronted Cine about this and she said she thought I was joking when I said no, which I have a recording of, but I'll I'll show the recording later. Yes, I did make a lot of comments about Jack's ass and how big and squishy it is. I've smacked him on the ass, I've grabbed his ass, I've even used his ass as a pillow. I've played with his breasts and I've always asked if what I was doing bothered him or made him uncomfortable and he's always said he doesn't mind, he doesn't care, it's fine. He says he didn't consent to me poking him in the ass or in the crotch, which I have to say, I don't know if he ever made it explicitly clear that he didn't like me poking him in the ass, and I do genuinely feel bad if I was making him uncomfortable by doing that. I say in the recording he took of me, by the way I had no fucking idea I was being recorded, I tell him I thought he was joking when he told me no. There's a lot of things that I do to Jack expecting a specific reaction because he makes funny noises. I would often grab his face and squish it in my hand and he'd make a murr sound, and I thought it was funny. I would hold his nose closed and when I let go he would inhale really hard. Funny. I'd pinch his double chin and he'd say, my gizzard. Funny. When I poked him in the ass, he would scream. Not a guttural scream, like it would be easy for me to assume that he was scared or upset. It was like a silly scream, like, ah, ah. <laughs> Last time I remember doing this though, he didn't react at all. He was playing with Squirp on the cat tree and I poked him in the ass and he didn't react. He just kept playing with the cat. He didn't even flinch. How am I supposed to know that you don't like what I'm doing if you don't tell me? If you told me before, then it wasn't really clear. You gotta be explicit with me. I'm autistic. I'm stupid. He says I poked him in the crotch and I have two memories of doing this and both times I immediately apologized afterwards. I poked him in the gents on accident because I was trying to poke him in the ass and I went too low and he told me, you poked me in the veg, and I apologized profusely and stressed that I didn't mean to. I poked him in the pubic area once and then immediately asked if it was okay to do that and to be frank, I don't actually have a clear memory of his response. I don't know why. This isn't something I do regularly. That's why I had to question if I actually did that in the recording. She would often poke me like in the ass or like on my crotch and like make jokes about fingering me and like... 
Sometimes when I poked him in the ass, I would say Starfinger because I thought it was funny. He brings up the fact that I asked him to sit on my face. I do understand if he's upset that I would ask him to do this. It's a sexual situation in nature, and he declined for that reason. If Jack doesn't like that I was willing to ask him to do that, he has every right to be upset. What he doesn't have the right to do is revoke his consent of me touching him and claiming I sexually assaulted him just because he doesn't like me anymore. That's pussy shit. And I'm gonna be honest, I consented to this because I've never had an IRL friend before and I didn't know what kind of touching was and wasn't okay. My brother in Christ, you are an adult. You choose what touching is okay. There is no rule book. Jack admits in his video to not looking over the evidence, which just irks me, dude. Your best friend is being accused of a bunch of shit, and you can't be bothered to look over any of it. Or even fucking get someone else to look over it for you. The original Addressing Cinebarrow 3 document is a fucking joke, I'll get to it when I get to it. But the information he got from me directly about the doc was me ranting about some of the dumbass points I saw while I skimmed through it while I was at work. There are some things that are definitely worth criticizing me for, and I'll get to those, but most of it was so unbelievably stupid. If you started to doubt me, why not have someone else relay the information to you at least? Like, what about Laurel? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I should be responsible for relaying this information to you, especially when I was at fucking work when this was happening. You gotta find this shit out on your own. No, I I have not been mooching off of Cinny. I have actually, like, I've helped pay rent every month. I've helped pay for groceries. I've given Cinny money for gas. I've paid for a lot of her things, like... I have not been mooching off of her, but... I was not mooching off of Cinny is a wild statement considering how much I was doing for you. We were living together for almost half a year, and I would say half that time you were staying in my apartment rent-free. The first few months we lived together, I was paying the rent in full, and I had to fucking plead with you to pay one-third of the rent. Not half rent! I offered Jack pay one-third of the rent because his benefits paid him half of what I get paid. I had to fucking drag it out of you, and you whined about it. You haven't paid rent for the past few months because your benefits were revoked. I cook, I clean the apartment, I do the dishes, I do the laundry, you sometimes clean the litter boxes when I ask you to, I drive you to your appointments, I pay for your medicine, I take you on car rides when you're sad, I buy you ice cream every week, I have to fucking bribe you with ice cream so you'll get out of bed and go to social security to try to get your benefits back. I was taking care of you, and it's fucking wild that you have the audacity to paint me as a monster and call me a pedophile when you should know that isn't fucking true. I've always been by your side, as long as you were willing to get better. I stood by your side when the internet still hated you and thought you were a groomer. I stood by you when you drew over the Borderline 12 shooting memorial. I am heartbroken that you threw away our friendship as soon as it wasn't easy being my friend. When I have done everything for you, you are a fucking coward. Not only would I call you a moocher, you're also a thief. You stole my jewelry, the fake nails that our mutual bought for me, and you took our fucking cat when you don't have a stable housing. I genuinely believe you should bring Squirt back to my apartment because you cannot take care of her on your own. You can't even take care of yourself. This isn't me being malicious and trying to take your cat from you because I'm upset with you. I don't think you can take care of her. And if you try to make the argument that I forgot to feed her a couple times when I left for work, I knew that they would be okay if I didn't feed them as soon as I got up because you were always home. I have to work all day while you sit on your ass at home and draw. You also begged me to get these cats. You should be willing to contribute to taking care of them by feeding them and cleaning up after them. Especially when you're always home. Jack brings up my obsession with boy. Let's talk about boy. Something that keeps getting brought up is the fact that I'm simping over a minor's character. Okay, who fucking cares? The character is an adult. That is what matters. Sock is uncomfortable with how I'm using boy. They blocked me. I don't care. I think I've made it very clear in the leaked DMs that I think Sock is way too sensitive when it comes to their characters. I think it's insanely stupid to post your characters online and then get upset when people get invested in your work. Not allowing people to ship your characters, ship themselves with your characters, make headcanons for your characters, kin your characters when you're posting them to the internet where everyone can see them is fucking ridiculous. Just try and control the internet. You will fail. I am tired of acting like she has any say over my creative freedom and self-expression. She blocked me so she doesn't have to see my art. That should be good enough for her. The only people hurting her are the ones who go out of their way to show her the things that I've drawn. Watch me continue to have beef with Sock.Clip. Before I get into my biggest concern, here's some smaller critiques that Jack had about me. He had an issue with me talking about sex AIs in my 13 plus server. This is actually something I believe was a problem. I shouldn't have talked about it in my server. That was irresponsible and cringe. 
And you know what? Someone did actually DM me saying that I shouldn't have been doing that. And I agreed with them and didn't do it again. I believe I contemplated making like a public apology within the server, but my mods told me not to. I don't have any evidence of this because the server was deleted and I didn't know how to export the files. So take what I say with a poke in the ass. Boop. Jack says it would have been better if my server was 16 plus, and I will be honest, I don't know about that. You'd prefer if I was talking to 16 year olds about which bots I can fuck? See, Jack is under the impression that 16 plus is an appropriate label for sexual content. And I was under that impression too for the longest time. I think it's because the animation art community often use 16 plus on sexual or suggestive content, and that's the community we grew up with. Realistically, it's still weird. Why even take a chance with the age stuff, honestly? If I ever make another Discord server, it is going to be 18 plus with precautions to prove your age. This shit is annoying. Jack was upset that I was sexting an AI bot while he was laying on top of me. I wasn't like touching myself or anything, but to be honest, I can see why this would upset him. I'm not gonna act like Jack was being irrational by getting upset that I was sexting an AI bot when he's trying to spend time with me. I do find it weird that he's upset that I would hide my DMs from him. He pushed to see my DMs at some points and I didn't want to show it to him. He admits that he knows I talk sexually with a lot of my friends, so I don't know why he didn't just drop it. Especially when he's hidden his DMs from me when he was talking to his partner or even to Laurel. It's a strange thing to complain about. I... I don't feel safe here anymore after learning what happened. I completely understand if my actions have made Jack trust me less and he doesn't want to support me. I'm annoyed because I did that for him, but I'm not entitled to his presence in my life. I think it's odd that Jack insists that he's in danger to some extent by staying with me. Do you think I'm going to get you? Do you think I'm going to hurt you? Genuinely, how are you in danger by staying with me? I've established how what I did wasn't sexual assault. You don't get to revoke your consent. It really feels like he's making the situation about himself. Literally nothing he's done has been in the interest of protecting Enno. And a lot of his behavior has actually put Enno in danger. Not only does he and Sophia not censor Enno's name in their videos like I was trying to do in mine, Jack included Enno in a section in his video, and he leaves in her Discord tag so any random motherfucker can contact them. ANYONE! If that's not bad enough, the document that shares our DMs, the one that Jack made Eno make for his video to come out, it doesn't just expose my kinks and fetishes. You're exposing that Eno likes this shit too, because Eno can be seen responding positively to a lot of this. People can use this information to prey on Eno. Eno would have been kept safer if this entire situation was handled privately. Jack! Not only that, but Jack has caused people to attempt to contact Eno's parents, which freaked them the fuck out. None of this is being handled responsibly. Nothing he's doing is helping the supposed victim. I don't think he even really cares if I'm being completely honest. The way Jack has been treating me makes no sense to me, and I want to talk about it. He was insisting that this needed to be a public, and he needed to have the first word. I made my apology video faster than he did, and he begged me to wait until his was done uploading, because according to him, people would attack him because they'd automatically assume he's on my side. So I waited for him to finish the video before I could upload mine. I was extremely emotional at this point in time. I was crying all day and I felt so sick that I had to take the day off work. I overheard him recording for his video and I heard some of the things he said and I went into a blind rage. That's when I sent him this text. I was furious. And yet later on I went back to apologize because Eno told me I shouldn't send stuff like that to Jack because it was only driving him further away. I assume he was in a GC with Soph and Eno and he must have sent them the text that I sent. Later that night, I came into his room and tried to reason with him and get him to stay with me, but he wasn't having it. I told him that I would do anything if he would stay, whether that be giving him my passwords or letting him look over my DMs with Eno, but he didn't want anything from me. I would have given anything to prove that I was willing to get better for him, and he made it clear that he needed to leave. I asked how long it would be until he left, and he didn't. I asked if I could just be with him and cuddle with him because I couldn't stand being alone. He said yes. I laid next to him and I held him, sobbing while he worked on the animation loop for his video. I watched him draw it. I remember asking why he was putting so much effort into an animation loop for a video that he insisted needed to be out as quickly as possible. I don't remember what his response was. That night, I took him to get Panera and the whole time, he was acting so normal. It was like nothing was wrong. I remember while we were waiting for our food, I broke down crying again and Jack told me, if it bothers you that I'm acting normal, I'm just really good at masking. He got a bread bowl, I got food too, but my stomach was in knots and I couldn't eat anything. We watched Rick and Morty while we ate. 
and I remember asking if we could try finishing Rick and Morty before he left, and he said that sounded like a good idea. I laid in bed with him, and he showed me funny videos, but I just kept crying. I remember very vividly how Jack was just pissing himself laughing, watching this guy eat a salad, meanwhile I was laying on top of him and sobbing. I asked if I could spend the night with him, and he said he wasn't sure if he could. But maybe tomorrow. I was upset, but I knew he needed space from me. I slept on the couch, I went to work, and when I came back, he was gone. He packed his shit and he left. I was so scared because I didn't know where he could have gone. I didn't know if he was safe or if he was on the street. I thought I had more time with him. I didn't even get a chance to say goodbye or hug him one last time. I was heartbroken, and I was scared for his safety. He wouldn't answer my phone, and Laurel had blocked me. My IRL friends didn't know where he was, and so I had to call Eno. Eno stayed on the phone with me to keep me company that night, and they apologized profusely because Eno felt like it was their fault, and it wasn't. Through Eno, I was able to confirm that Jack wasn't safe, but he was alive, and he didn't plan on coming back. I relayed to him that if he needed anything, I would be there for him. If he was in danger, I would help him. It may sound upsetting that I had to call Eno of all people, but I had no one else to talk to. I had nowhere else to go. The next morning, I woke up to really loud knocking on my door. The police showed up to my apartment to check on me. It was a wellness check. They said my real life friend called them, but later I asked that friend and she didn't know what I was talking about. I saw Jack tried to call me multiple times and I texted him back saying I'm sorry and I was asleep. And also the police came by and he said, we thought you died, lol. He didn't say anything after that. That was the last time he ever messaged me. I thought this was a good sign, honestly. I thought this meant that even though he was upset with me, he still cared enough to make sure I'm alive. He cared enough to call the police for a wellness check. I went to work that day, and late into my shift, I saw that he made a Twitter thread. He openly bragged about stealing my friends from me, and he told me to live and suffer, and he called me a pedophile. And he took a picture of the hat he left on my pillow before he left. The idea that he still cared about me was snuffed out almost instantly. I didn't know what to think of him anymore. I didn't know what he was capable of. I didn't know what he was willing to do. So I went into a delusional, paranoid state. I had to leave work early, but I couldn't go home. I was convinced that if I went home, then someone would be at my apartment and they would kill me. I thought Jack sent someone to my apartment and they would kill me as soon as I opened the door. I bought three things. I got pepper spray, a pocket knife, and a crowbar to protect myself because I was scared for my life. That real life friend I mentioned earlier, I called them and I told them I couldn't go home. I asked if I could stay at their place for the night and they said they couldn't. I feel bad because I screamed at them over the phone when they tried to assure me that I wasn't actually in danger. They were just trying to help me out of my delusion and I screamed at them for it. We set up a plan where I parked in a different town. They drove to me and they took my spare key and then they went to my apartment to check all the rooms, and they told me it was safe to come. They left before I came home, and when I came home, I held my pepper spray in my hand, and I checked all the rooms myself. And when I saw my cat, I just started crying. Stupid doesn't understand what's going on. I don't feel safe in my own home anymore. I'm feeling better ever since this happened, but fuck, man. I keep seeing the things that Jack posts on Twitter, and it just makes me feel sick. It makes me angry. The fact that I thought he cared about me. I thought he loved me. And he says this awful shit publicly, fucking victory lapping around me, encouraging people to make hateful art about me, talking about stealing my intellectual properties for himself to use, knowing that I can't say anything about it because the internet fucking hates me, trying to silence me once he found out that I was making my video. I can't help but think that he wanted me to kill myself. I love him so much, but I can't help but feel like I was used. I did everything for him. I loved him, and I thought he loved me, and I feel like he wanted me to kill myself. He's taken everything from me, and he's laughing at me. He's mocking me when I thought he loved me. I don't know where he is right now. I don't know if he's safe. I don't know what's happening to him. He said he was going to make a second video talking about me, but he had to stop because of something dangerous happening, and I don't know what he was referring to. I fucking feel sick because I still care about him. I genuinely hope he is safe. I still love him. Even after seeing all this. I still love him. I don't know why he's acting like this. I know he has borderline personality disorder, so I really hope that this is just him splitting on me and maybe later down the line he'll come to his senses 
and realize that I'm not the monster he's saying I am. That could just be hopeful thinking, but I do know that borderline personality disorder causes you to think in black and white. He thought I was the most amazing person ever, and now he thinks I'm the worst. I hope it changes. I want my friend back. I think it'd be ridiculous to come out of this situation still thinking it'd be a good idea to put myself in spaces that are mostly occupied by children. I can see that I have a huge issue filtering myself in these spaces, and I have theories as to why that is. I grew up in a community where adults and children made sexual content that was mostly consumed by children. I've always had friends who I was sexual with ever since I was in elementary school, so I've gotten used to having relationships where I share intimate details with them. I've talked sexually with my fans when I myself was a minor still, and I think my brain never recognized that as an issue, nor did I recognize that my collective audience wasn't growing up at the same rate as I was. When I was a child, my audience was around my age. Now I'm 21 and my audience has grown too, but it's still mostly children, and I think I have trouble comprehending that when I speak in public spaces. These reasons and theories do not excuse what I've done. I think the best solution would just be to put myself in spaces with other adults and not let this become a problem again. I gotta stop talking to people under 18, whether I think they're funny and fun to talk to or not. I'm still going to at least take a break from my social media. I don't think it'd be good for me to immediately come back. It doesn't feel right. I don't expect my video to change everyone's mind and make people think I'm a good person. I don't even think I'm a good person. But I'm not a predator. And to be as clear as humanly possible, all these changes that I'm making are for me. Not for Jack. Not for you. I want to make an effort to be better. But I don't owe you shit. My name is Cinebarrow3. Baka baka.